How are we doing? Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Welcome to part one in our full inclusive course covering Revolution by Wave Alchemy. Um, Wave Alchemy are a UK based company. They, they're the people that have created this contact instrument, Revolution. It runs inside the free contact player or contact five. Um, yeah, where to start? We're going to take this to bits bit by bit. We're going to start at the top, work our way down through this page. We're then going to go to the sequence section, talk about how you can program your, your sounds inside this step sequencer. We're going to be covering the effects of all the different layers, which are insert, send, and master. We're also going to be going over the step sequencer at the bottom, which is more your traditional style of step sequencer that came along with these sort of drum machines. We're going to be covering how you can load this into a drum rack inside Ableton with the pre they've uh, already gave you the ADG file to do that. We're going to be covering using this inside the Native Instruments Complete Control software also. But as it stands to start with, I've just got this loaded inside Contact. I've opened up Contact, browsed for it in my library, and loaded it straight in. So, as I said at the start, this is going to be a full course. We're going to be covering every knob, slider, and button. Um, in this first part, we're just going to be going over the browser part and the patterns and the way that you can change the patterns around and, uh, yeah, browse through the presets. So there's a link in the description to the full um, playlist of these videos as they're uploaded. They will be increased, obviously, until I get to the end. Um, the link will be in the description to all of the videos. So if you've come in, if you come in later on, obviously, if you're watching this one, you haven't. If you come in later on and you have come back to this one, then the uh, playlist is linked in the description at the bottom. So yeah, let's get going. So um, what you can see straight out of the bat at the top is the classic uh, contact part, if you like. If you press on this gear icon, it folds it the instrument and then it lets you go sort of inside the hood, if you like. Shows you the instrument buses, the insert effects, the send effects, and the modulation that you've got going on. You're not really going to need to be going inside this or have any anything to do with this, but I'll just sort of let you know what that gear icon does. You got master tune, your overall volume, your solo mute, and your pan settings. But yeah, this is where the the cool things come. This is where the presets are going to be. So if we click, click, click on this area here, these are the original drum machines that it's got inside sampled. There are 14 different drum machines. They are the R505, the RV606, the RV707, the RV78, the RV8000, the 808, Classic 909, the RV Boy. The RV drum, the RV DX, the RV the RV stands for Revolution. The bit that comes after is the old school drum machine. If you get a like, so you got the 505, 606, 707, V78, the 8000, 808, 909, boy, the drum, which is takes after the Lindrum, the VDX, I think was the Oberheim, the SB12, which is a classic sampler. The tracks I'm not too sure what the other ones are but anyway you've got 14 different samplers that you can choose from these are different ways that they've uh, recorded the samples so that they sound slightly different so yeah I mean you can just go ahead straight away and load the 808 analog so this now every single drum hit is coming straight from the 808 as it would have done in yesteryear with no extra resampling no different, nothing added. The way you can change the um, character of this, if you like, rather than going in here, going to drum machines and choosing between the different versions where you've got analog, tape, tape one, tape two, tape three, you can go inside this little header here and click on this section here, analog character. It cycles through, so it goes from analog, tape one, tape two, S1200, which gives it more of a dulled down sound. Digital, SP1200, and the mastered. It's very hard to hear them when you've just got one element playing, but you can uh, hear it when you've got a full sequence going. So yeah, we're going to touch on this uh, sort of master window as, as we progress through the thing. But yeah, that's how you choose your drum machine. If you just wanted to load a drum machine without any presets, that's the way to do it. I mean, we can go in now, look at another one. Let's look at the um, SP12. We'll choose the digital version. So the digital, this is the character again. It goes from the master to the SP12 to the digital. So this is the one we loaded it on. 
more of a modern sounding one. This would be something that I would use if I, in my uh, the sort of music that I make. We'll talk about how you can change the sample, change overall sounds. Again, we'll go over that later on. So yeah, that's the drum machines in the analog kits. These are kits designed using sort of little bits of every one. So if we go to early analog, you've got the RV8000 on the kick. You've got the RV78 on the second kick. RV8000 on the first snare. 78 second snare. Most of these samples are coming from the 78 or the 8000. You can see it's a hybrid instrument. You're not, you don't own... You don't have to have a full drum machine loaded. You can load individual elements onto these different sounds if you want. You could have one sound from each of the different samplers that you've got inside there. But again, we'll be brushing on that later on. So yeah, as well as the analog kits, they're digital kits. These hybrid kits are where it really gets funny. I mean, if we go into Concrete Jungle, a lot of these are going to be different samples for everyone. So we've got a 505 kick, a 909, the drum snare, 505 snare 707 you can see it. this one's probably using four three or four or five different uh different of the samplers if you like to create one virtual instrument you can obviously go in and assign different ones to whatever you want i mean once you've loaded a preset if you didn't like the snare you can always change it out again we'll be covering that in the next section so processed kits this is where the, the most of them are these are not just using the drum machines, these are using effects and uh, a lot of the uh, characteristics section and the, the the way that you can tune and shape the sounds later on, sort of pushed it off grid if you like. Drum and race is a favourite one because obviously I like drum and bass. It's quite quiet, we'll just boost the volume, not to the point of clipping. Now, that is virtually how you load your, your presetted drum machines, if you like. You can go ahead, choose straight from the analog kits, the digital kits, the hybrid kits, which has got bits from each, or the process kits where it's like proper chopped up. They've even messed around with the characters and the changed samples. And yeah, a, a lot more out of the analog, the analog bubble, if you like. Some of these kits are really, really cool. But yeah, it's as simple as that. Click on the drop down menu, choose your kit. Now, every time you load a click kit, it loads four patterns with that kit. So we've just loaded this drum and race. Um, we'll be going over the sequencer and how everything works later on. But yeah, if I press play, it's playing pattern one. If I click on that, load pattern two. Pattern three. Pattern four. Pattern five is blank. Obviously, you can load this preset and then you can save your own uh, save your own patterns into the bank for the preset. So it's easily easily done like that. Yeah. So four patterns to choose from. Let's stop it. Let's just load another one so you can hear it. I really like these process kit chub step. This is going to be a dubstep sort of pattern I would like. Let's push it to 140. Pattern one. First time I opened this, I found myself just playing through some of these presets, just sort of getting the gist of what you can do with it. Seems really straightforward for me. Um, some unique features that you have got inside this. If I just scoot this over a little bit, I know it's beyond my head, but it doesn't matter. This little MIDI arrow here, if you click on that, now these dots are black. The sequence that's playing in there, or the pattern if you like, you can now drag this 
into Ableton or your door. If you just hover over these dots, click on it, drag it, drop it in, press yes. We have now dragged that into Ableton so that we're not relying on the internal sequence of doing it. If we press spacebar inside Ableton, obviously if we loop it up, This is the way that I've found myself working with this instrument. I mean, it's nice to um, it's nice to sort of build the sounds up inside it and create the patterns, get the groove going. Once I've got the groove going, then I've been sort of dragging it, dropping it into Ableton. So I've got the MIDI to modify it actually inside Ableton. So then, obviously, you can mess around with it, do whatever you want. You can apply grooves inside Ableton. You can do other MIDI triggering devices inside Ableton if you so wish. Add in other notes. Obviously, I was just adding any old thing in there just to show you. So, yeah, really cool feature. You need to make sure that once you've clicked on the arrow that those dots are black, though. If you try and drag and drop from that area, you'll get nothing. It won't even let you do it. So click on the arrow until it goes black. Click on the MIDI letters, sorry, till it goes black. Drag it. Drop your pattern in. And that goes to same... As I say, if I choose a different pattern, it automatically changes it. But then you have to go ahead and click the MIDI button again. So click it. It's gone black, drag it, drop the new pattern in. Really cool feature. I think the way they've um, made the drum machine is absolutely awesome. Obviously, I know I keep saying it, but you'll see it as we progress through the different uh, stages of this synth. But the way they've made, helped you integrate it into your DRW, Ableton especially, is phenomenal. Um, I'll be showing you the drum rack. Um, sort of modulation mapping that they give you so you can drag an ableton.agd file in when you load at revolution it's already pre-mapped to a drum rack for you if you want to play from the keyboard rather than having this open just use this to sort of tweak your dials um, and when it opens up inside complete control there is so much control everything you can even i mean i'll just show you now see this number one here you can load the uh, dots in the bottom from your controller so if i click on the kick I can turn them on and off from the keyboard, the different notes. I can I can play patterns from the keyboard. Change the pattern. And these are all Obviously I'm doing that without it inside complete control, but when once it's loaded inside the complete control software, you get the key guide and stuff like that. Um I haven't managed to get it running inside that yet, but I will do. Yeah, for later on to show you more. But yeah, for now, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in the first section, just the way you can load presets and um, load the different patterns. Yeah, one thing I should say quickly, if you like a pattern, say if we load an analog kick, any analog, say if we like this pattern for some reason, which there is none, if we go to hybrid kit again, Processed. So yeah, so if we really like this pattern but we wanted to change the kit out or a preset for another kit, if you press this little lock button here, so it's highlighted, that now locks that pattern in and we can go around and change the kit. So just choose anything, you can just go ahead and load a straight drum machine or we can change it from another process kit. So, same pattern, different kit. Yep, so yeah, part one, done. Bit of waffling, um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned, next time we're going to be covering this section here. What is visible in that section there, so... 
how to trigger the individual hits, the volume, the panning, the delay, and the reverbs, solos, and mute. We may also touch on um, how you can switch out the sounds in this box here. But yeah, that will be part two. Thanks for watching. Cheers.